Hello everyone, I'm Gizzard, and hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day. And today we are here with a three-tick granite mining guide for Old School RuneScape and my Endless Adventure Make as Many Guides as Possible. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, helps the video, channel, and other people find this. But with that said, let's go ahead and get on into it. So to start for the requirements, you're going to need at least 45 mining to be able to mine granite in the first place. I'd highly recommend higher than that though, 70 would be ideal. At least being able to have a dragon pickaxe would be the best. If you can't tell, I'm urging you to please get a little higher. <laughs> Beyond that, Varrock Armor 2 is also very helpful as it gives you a 10% chance at double granite. You also have the Celestial Ring, which can give you a 4 mining boost. And a Desert Amulet 4 eliminates any use of water skins. You don't have to have those, but it is nice if you do. For the hourly rates, for mining XP, you can get anywhere from 30k to 130k. So obviously that is a wide discrepancy. 30k is at, you know, level... 45 with barely any tick manipulation 130k is at level 95 plus with three tick granite in addition to that the pet rate is 350 hours if you're doing the best version of three tick granite at a very high level so realistically probably closer to 500 not very fun probably not the best way to go about that but it is a great way to get xp which takes me then to is it worth it Personally, I think it is very worth it in terms of mining XP and just efficiency in game. Definitely worth doing. Now, can you bear to do it? Do you enjoy doing it enough? That's going to have to be a question we answer yourself. But before that, we're gonna need to know what items we need to bring. So as far as the gear, pretty simple stuff. Essentially bring up prospector armor and a Varrock top if you have Varrock armor two or higher. In addition to that, best pickaxe you have, I have an amulet of glory to be able to get there. And if you don't have Prospector yet, make sure to bring Desert Robes to eliminate the use for as much water as possible. Then you could also bring a Hit Points Cape and a Regen Bracelet if you have access to both of them. If you have both of them, then you won't need any sort of water skins because you'll be able to outheal the Thirst Damage. And then for the inventory, there's quite a few different things here. So one, we'll have to note the Clean Harlander, the Swamp Tart, and the Clean Taraman, along with the Pestle and Mortar, so four out of the six items noted, are all used for three ticking. Basically, if you use one of those herbs on the Swamp Tart, it allows you to skip actions in-game and make your process a little quicker. You probably should know that at this point in the game. If not, that's okay. Beyond that, I have an herb sack because you can store up extra herbs in there in case you accidentally make them. So every time you cancel the action and you're not actually using those herbs, but if you do accidentally use the herb, you'll have an herb sack. And then we have water skins as well if you don't have the Desert Amulet 4, along with some coins that I have to travel and whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and teleport now to Alcarid and we will start from there and get where we need to go. So for me, I'm gonna use this big window, get on out of here. You could use the Ring of Dueling as well and then run south. And from there, we're gonna to head to the southwest where you can take the ferry on over to the Temporos area. So head on down here and board the ferry. This is how most people are gonna make our way on over here. Where we need to get to is the southwest corner of the desert. As you can see, we are quite close. You could also use a couple different methods, one of which is the Camulet right here if you have the Desert Hard Diary done. Also, the Pharaoh Scepter teleports you up here. And you could take the Magic Carpet down to the Bandit Camp and then run south, but that takes quite a bit of time. So, once you're in here, you can bank. There's a bank nearby, so hit that up if you need. I have some coins so that we can buy water skins if you need to, and also on top of that, a Shanty Pass. So I'm going to trade them. I'm going to grab a pass because that's what I need at the moment. If you need water skins, grab them now. I like to fill up about half my inventory with water skins so that I can get a good amount of granite in the inventory and also have some protection against the desert heat. Since I have a high diary, I don't need the shanty pass, but I got it for the looks, you know, for the guide. Anyways, from there, go ahead and make your way on up to the northwest, and then we'll find our granite spot up over here. So we'll find our way to the southwestern side of this mine, and there are four granite tiles down here that we're going to want to note. We will hop between this one, this one, this one, and this one, and then we will circle back to the beginning. To get some of the basics out of the way, essentially, whenever we mine a granite tile, it will take three ticks to mine it, two ticks to walk over to another one, and then three ticks to mine that one. And so every time, it's basically taking five ticks in total. 
You can still get decent XP per hour this way. If you don't want to sweat that much, this isn't going to be bad either. However, it's not ideal. And if you want to optimize your gameplay, then you're going to want to do what's called three ticking, which is where we add in this. So essentially, as we talked about earlier, using the swamp tar on one of these herbs, you'll see a process start to happen. This process basically means that once I am done mining on this block, I can immediately mine on the next block, even if my character is not located there yet. I'll clear out my inventory and demonstrate it for you. So we'll click on the granite rock as soon as my pickaxe hits it, then we'll want to move one to the south. So I'm going to click, use these on each other, and then go south. And as you can see, we're doing it in three ticks now. Just like so, got all those done, nice and easy, and then we make our way back on up here. So we'll talk about a couple different settings that you can use to make this a bit easier. So one thing that I like is this XP drop, at least if you're learning to get a feel for what's going on here. So click on the settings and then from there do a fake XP drop delay of three ticks and then you can turn it on. And what this will do is every three ticks it will drop down a mining XP for you based on whenever the last time you got an action done was. So here I will click on this rock once it's done then three ticks later another one goes. So that's how you know when your actions should be done because basically whenever I'm going to the next rock there's no guarantee that I'm going to get it right. And if I don't get it right I still want to move and go to the next one. So we'll go for an example here and once I get an example, see right there, I didn't get that one, I got the next one. You need to stay in rhythm here because if you lose your rhythm at granite, you start to try to mine, but you never really mine. So I'll show you an example of that as well. One thing before I show that example though, you will want to do this on a resizable layout. I feel like that is helpful because then I can lower that. And also you can do this as well, which I'm going to add into it. I also like to turn off the data orbs that are up here to give myself a little more room to click back on the rock. So I'll turn that off too. So as far as what you're gonna wanna look for here, what I would start off by doing is just clicking on a piece of granite using the swamp tar and an herb, and then going to the next one and just continuing that until you get a full inventory. Whenever you go back up to the north, make sure to click on the furthest upper herb in your inventory to make that a little bit easier. And if you don't end up hitting anything, make sure to keep on moving every three ticks, because if not, you will lose your rhythm and then you won't be able to three tick anymore. It just lost it right there. And as you can see, didn't work for me. Gonna have to wait. Eventually you can pick back up on when that five tick timer is going to hit, because basically if you go out of rhythm, you just have to wait five ticks and then you can catch it back on the three tick. But it's really hard and really takes just a lot of getting used to to be able to do that. So as I said, just early on when you're learning it, don't worry about dropping anything until you get a full inventory. If you want to bring less water skins, so then you can have more time to not worry about dropping, that's up to you, go ahead. If you fall out of rhythm, the easiest thing that I can say that I do to get back into rhythm is just go ahead and pick up a piece of something underneath you. So I'll pick up something and then that will stop any animation I'm doing. It allows me to then realize when I'm getting back into all this. So continue doing that until you feel comfortable. And then at that point, we're going to want to incorporate dropping items into our rotation as well. Typically, I'll only drop when going to mine these three. I won't drop when going to mine this one since it's a little harder to reach and then drop. One thing of note with this as well is if you hold in shift on the rune like client and then right click your items, you can change what their shift click is. So right now I'm holding shift and I can swap this to whatever I want. It's currently swapped to use. So instead of dropping this, I'll use it. Same thing goes with the Harlander and the Tarman. So I can hold shift this whole time and essentially I will be able to then use these together and then drop something else. Now I've accidentally made the tar, which is something we did talk about earlier. So if that happens, make sure to drop it. And then from there, you can open up and empty your herb sack. I have too many tarmans, so I'm gonna to have to make some extra room. And there we go, there's some Harlanders in there. I'm going to clean one, just one, and then fill it back up and you're good to go just like that. So say for example, my inventory is getting pretty full right here. I'll click on this rock and then I'll use these two together. I'll drop two and I'll click again. And then we just keep doing that as we move. Once you get the rhythm for it, it is pretty simple. Use the two together, drop two, click again, and just keep, continue that going down. Now, the other way I like to drop them is when I'm down here, I'll click on this one, and then I'll be ready to use those two together. We'll use the two together, and then I'll go up there and click on that one. Just like that, we keep on going. 
And really at that point, it's just a process of working on putting that all together and doing it over and over and over again. There will be a lot of struggles along the way, but over time you'll get better and better at it. Even personally, I struggle at it still, even though I know what to do, sometimes my clicks just aren't on point. Eventually, if you're doing this enough, you'll get it. It'll start to kind of click for you. And then from there, you'll be able to get the best mining XP in game. That's going to be it for me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like. In addition to that, if you want to see more videos like this, as soon as you go live, make sure to subscribe. And there's also a clan chat, discord, Twitch, tons of different places you can check out myself and the community at down below in the description. But with that said, hopefully you have a wonderful day and uh, peace.